What I'm going to tell you about is something more earthly, more practical. We try to make the ideas of artists a reality. We help them with their creative process and we place the means at their disposal to carry out their works. There are different types of artists. Some of them have very clear ideas, some others uh, make their ideas clear throughout the process. And both things are valid, of course. I like to say that we are art, uh, craftsmen, and the definition of craftsmen is the uh, exercise of an activity which is purely mechanical, a purely mechanical art or craft. We are absolutely practical. We have knowledge on uh, the trade, on geometry. We are capable of interpreting the ideas that we are told about. Depending on the degree of communication established with the artist, we achieve better or worse results. The foundry was started in 1957 in a, in a carbon kiln. And this is in Coca, Segovia. This is an image of my father and one of the uh, workers that was retired as already, and we have a second generation that is working at the moment in the foundry. These are the new facilities. Obviously, we've had an evolution. At the moment, we have more than 16,000 square meters devoted to paying service to artists. <coughs> The facilities include all the current technology, 3D, all kinds of auxiliary means for the artists. We have a technical department where we can help them develop and integrate the projects. We have started with the most ancient techniques of sculptures, which is the enhancement by dots. For all artists, it was essential to have a model, a sketch, and to change the size. We started doing the same things that the Egyptians did. Well, my thing is the workshop and not speaking in public. Well, anyway, we started doing the enhancements. Today, we still do it. But we increasingly do less. The enhancement of a sculpture is a geometrical process, purely geometrical process, to change the representation of a this is done through three coordinates, referred to the zero point. Formerly, it was done without any mathematical knowledge required. By, it was done by dots, by points, and it was the Thales theorem. We had three measurements. 
se iban trasladando los puntos. And we transferred the points from one place to the other. Then later, different means have been introduced. The most generic ones, it was the prism, uh, the inscription in a prism. We measured the depth, the height, etc. The model was placed and we transferred that to the model. Now, today it's been done through 3D scanners. The geometrical principle is exactly the same. We measure with an automatic uh, machine. This red thing that you see is the laser that is projected. It is gathering the coordinates of all the points. So when it was done manually, we only gather essential points and we transfer that to the sculpture, maybe 300, 400 maximum. Ahora un escáner recoge millones de puntos con sus coordenadas, por lo tanto registran la superficie. But now with the scan, we have millions of points included. This is a high definition scanner. It is a, an arm that gathers in uh, that gathers ten points, and it can, of course, uh, capture a, a digital print. This is also gathering a semi-sphere of 300 meters in radius. This is done for bigger objects and to make them smaller. The other one is for small ones that are enhanced. So, applying all these 3D technology that we have available, the most regular way to proceed is once we have the 3D models, we develop what we could call engineering of the project, if it is a big project or a small project. What do we do? With the 3D model, virtually, we can calculate structures, just as this case. These were hands that were 15 meters long. It's a, a work by Lorenzo Quinn that was done in the Netherlands. The architect studying the structure thought that this would not fit in the hands. We, in the technical department, said, let's introduce a more organic structure and you will calculate whether it supports it or not. And this is what we did it. We used our skills and knowledge to carry out a non-regular structure and he used his knowledge to make sure that it would not fall down. When we work in 3D, this is very interesting because we can uh, emulate the, the transport, the uh, installation of this, and it was a huge size in this particular case, and this gives us plenty of options. Once we have digitized the whole project, Sometimes we print it in 3D, other times we do it with a plaster printer. We have a wax printer también. So we use all the 3D printing. When we do uh, big pieces, this is the star of uh, printing. It's a robot that can you uh, create a sculpture uh, of a size of three times three times four meters. For us, 3D technology is not a final project. 3D technology does not uh, provide the uh, hand elaboration, of course, it's different. So in the end, technology provides us with tools, more or less sophisticated tools. The robot is a tool, of course, but if, this, if we don't have somebody who's capable of determining what does this tool do, the tool itself is good for nothing. The 
tools with which Michelangelo did the David are tools that are common to anyone. Anybody could do it, but it depends on the way you do it and use them. It depends on that to achieve one result or another. So the tool itself does not give you anything anything in itself. It provides you with advantages, of course, but what it really gives you is the way you use these tools. We use CNC systems for more precision, precision milling for small parts, even big ones as well, for additions as well. So it has more engineering involved. So once we have the model configured, in which the artist has participated, it will be essential. Because in the end, out of all these 3D processing, what we obtain is an aseptic object. It's not an expressive object. Why? Because the tension generated by pressing a, a, some a clay with a finger or a stick cannot be reproduced by a 3D process. Today, we don't have any other model. We, put, uh, we introduce a liquid on solid material and you obtain that. From the model onwards, we follow a reproduction process normally in metal. We do it in bronze, resin, stone, wood. But the most uh, regular thing is to do it in metal. The uh, wax uh, foundry is the oldest procedure. It comes with the uh, metals. And lost wash casting is the way it's called. It's the first phase in the process, and uh, you create uh, uh, pieces that are very complex. Without losing the complexity, you can take them then into metal. This does not happen with the most industrial ones. For instance, to uh, build uh, weapons, you uh, use the foundry in a different fashion. You do it with molds of stone that are negatives, uh, and then you use that for many reproduction, but it is quite limited. You can only reproduce very simple forms, but lost wax casting enables to do it, and you move it to a metal, you transfer it into metal in a very easy fashion. We have used uh, the image of Campidoglio's Marco Re Marcus Aurelius sculpture. They say that this is the universal piece, 2,000 years, and it solves many, many things. Most of the solutions that we apply today, this was solved 2,000 years ago. This the question statue of Marcus Aurelius. You can see how the holes are repaired. We have pieces of different colors. This is a piece in itself. They didn't have welding, of course, so they use other techniques to solve it. The horse is done in a piece. It's cast in a piece. Today, it would be very difficult to do it in a piece. This is the, low, the back part. There were more defects, and since they didn't have control on the alloy, they are oxidized in different colors because of the way the metal suffers. Concerning the molds, we have a silicon mold 
We have a silicone mold with wax. We uh, use different items here. We have a, a ceramic cover to have a refraction negative. The wax registers all that, records all that, and then we take it out of the negative, and then we, in the hole, in the hollow, we use uh, the metal. We fill in it with metal. Then, of course, we have to review it. The works review is very important because there are things that we have to continually work afterwards. It is a very tedious process. Works is uh, tedious. We invest plenty of time and the results take time. So artists such as Picasso can work with walks, but the result takes time and they become very nervous because they don't see the results. In other techniques such as ceramics, or textile as well. Textile is also tedious, but they see the results earlier, and they see, it, they see them directly. But in the uh, foundry, the process is longer, and it takes time to achieve the results. When the pieces are big, they are connected, they are melted, they, they are cast, and then we use the patina with uh, chemical products, with heat, they are polished, etc. These are some examples of the things we do. This is a piece by Manolo Valdez that was placed in Miami in a private setting. And this piece was also found in the Botanic Garden in New York. This is done uh, with a joint work in the Manolo workshop. Manolo Valdez knows very well how to do the head, but he doesn't know how to do the, uh, the hairdo, and uh, then we support by creating a structure with reticles with the elements with which you're going to do that. So we have a self-moving structure that we can move from one place to another. And sometimes it's, an, it's a structural thing so that it becomes connected. So it is 19 meters of light and it's only supported in the center. So in the end, this took plenty of time and we managed to develop a technique to be able to do it. There were several pieces there. The one with the fans was also demanding a series of techniques to do it. Then the artists are offered a turnkey project. We coordinate the transport, we organize everything. This is an exhibition in Dubai. We took nine pieces. It was 19 special transports. So you have to be uh, very skillful with the logistics to move that kind of, those kind of pieces. This is still Dubai. Out of this whole process, in the end, what we generate is an interaction between the artist and the craftsman, because we are mechanical workers. So what we achieve is an interaction in which the artist is the essential part. We are. We can be replaced, of course, because the artists are the ones that conceive the idea. When we have our visits in the workshop, when we finish, and they say, what does the artist do? What's essential? The idea, the thinking, the concept. And we do things as he or she tells us. Uh, but if there's no artist, there's nothing we can do. 
I am a sculptor and I can do my work. I, I, am, I have a degree in fine arts, but when I do my work, the process is exactly the same that any other artist. I use a series of art of craftsmen that manage to achieve a reality. So basically, this is what's interesting, and we are craftsmen because our intention, our goal, is to develop very mechanical, very repetitive processes that are applied for different artists, even though any or any other can, uh, any artist can provide their interesting things. So we can uh, do furniture for designers. We do architectural objects that are singular as well. A few years ago, this is San Sainz de Oiza in Brussels. It's a building in Brussels. This is an international uh, contest, and we won it. And in the world of architecture, we realized that we could also work there. Because the architect for certain objects, when they uh, want to be singular, they design objects that we apply. We apply our knowledge, and we uh, do something that is very customized. <coughs> Actually, uh, this is, these are the doors, the gates. <coughs> these are the gates by Cristina Iglesias in the Prado Museum in the enhancements of the Prado Museum. These are 26,000 kilos of copper. It's not a gate in itself, of course. Uh, it is actually a sculpture. So these uh, parts are changed, and it change, they are changed four times a day. So we did all the engineering so that we can actually move the, do the gates, and we can uh, create different compositions with them. This is another one for architecture. These are the last uh, doors in, Sa in, the, in Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. It was a true challenge by this uh, sculpture uh, from Japan, Soto, Etsuro Soto. They were worried about the complexity. And I told him, yes, do work, and we'll do anything that is needed. Well, do you think we will do it? And I said, yes, I do believe we will do it, because otherwise the work will not be done properly. You have to do it, and once you've done it, we'll see what we can do. So he was surprised, because these are the lateral doors. Uh, I didn't... He didn't understand how we could do a mold to, ob to obtain this uh, fashion. He said, it's a miracle. When we finished, he said, we achieved a miracle. There are techniques to develop it. In architectures, we've done uh, lighting towers. This is in Zaragoza. Towers developed by an architect, 28 meters in height. We've done, we've also done this technique for luxury shops, faxes. The design was by Peter Marino, a very uh, famous New York designer. We have very good connection with Peter. Uh, we started started with this uh, shop, and we've done all the shops around the world. These are the stairs for the new designer in Loewe in Madrid. These uh, stairs seem to be something, something easy, but there's no uh, people that can actually do it. This is in Tokyo. And these are Bernard Benet's gates, uh, French sculpture. This is the first time he worked with us 
And he said, you're doing what I proposed. This is what should happen. If we change your work, that's not normal. Some decoration elements, more decoration elements. This is in Doha, a lattice of 260 tons in copper. This was designed by us and executed. There are no pictures of the villa once it was finished because the sheikh is a, the prime minister, so this was forbidden to take pictures in, with the Finnish idea. And this is the hands by Lorenzo Quinn in, in the Netherlands. It was a private project as well, a, 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 a relevant uh, computing company, and it was kind of a, a viewpoint. So, and then a six meters in diameter uh, ball, uh, the globe. It was done in less than a year. But we have worked for Botero. The biggest horse made by Botero ever was done by us. We did it with a 3D development. We developed a method so that the, the foundry was much more precise. He didn't want to come to our foundry because he was not very happy with Spain. He finally came and he congratulated us. He was astonished at the fact that we could have done it in the time and quality that we did it. And this is my own sculpture. Every now and then I do sculpture myself. I don't do it a lot because normally I'm very busy. I feel more comfortable working with artists than doing my own work. But this was something that I had said I would do, so it's 25 times 12 times 9 meters, 108 tons of uh, iron. Thank you. Thank you very much.